In the past, cars were purely mechanical machines. They all had manual analog controls with no trace of computer technology within. Driving was all in the hands of the person behind the steering wheel. Fast forward to today. The automobile has changed a lot since its inception by Henry Ford in 1896. Now cars not only are safer, but also equipped with lots of advanced technology. Cruise control, lane assist, parking assist, reversing cameras, automatic braking, and many other features are powered by onboard computers. And with the advent of electric cars, vehicles will be more and more computerized moving forward. Come to think of it, the car of the future may be a supercomputer on wheels, especially if they're self-driving cars. For that reason, silicon chips have become necessary components of modern cars. Without them, driving automation would not be possible. Before, chips were not big issues as they were widely available. But now, car manufacturers have a huge problem. The world is facing a global shortage of computer chips. Every technology company is affected, including car makers. In today's video, we'll take a look at how the global chip crisis will impact the cars of the future. Why do cars need computer chips? At its core, the automobile still relies on one critical component, and that's the internal combustion engine. This is what drives the wheels and most other moving parts. But a car is more than just a machine moving forwards and backwards. The vehicle has a whole host of other parts that also need controlling. You have brakes, transmission, lights, windows, wipers, entertainment system, and pretty much everything else inside. Not to mention that modern cars have a lot of safety features built into them, like anti-lock brakes, traction and roll control, as well as parking and lane assistance. These features don't need driver intervention, so they're all driven by computers. Most cars these days have not just one, but a network of several computers working together. This network is composed of several different electronic control units, or ECUs, that direct different parts of the vehicle. Each ECU has a different job, equipped with sensors that detect information like temperature, speed, distance from other cars, engine revs, gears, and many more. These ECUs are also the ones helping keep you safe on the road. One of them prevents your tires from skidding when you slam on the brakes at high speeds. Another one controls what gear the car is in. And another one is responsible for the warning lights you occasionally see on the dashboard. Yes, that means the check engine light too. ECUs control almost every aspect of the car that is out of your hands. Different ECUs can also pass information to and from each other. It's these ECUs that employ silicon chips to get their jobs done. And because each car has several ECUs, thousands of chips are needed per vehicle. In fact, most cars today have close to 3,000 silicon chips at once. In short, with all of the features that modern cars have, they can no longer be manufactured without these chips. Now let's take a look at why chips are dwindling in number. Why is there a global chip shortage? Computer chips are made of silicon, a chemical element that will never have a shortage. You can find silicon in sand, and there's always a lot of sand on Earth. Thus, silicon by itself is not the problem. Rather, the problem is with the companies who use silicon chips. The highest demand for these chips are from the electronics industry, with tech giants like Samsung, Apple, and Microsoft leading the way. In the past, there was always an adequate supply of chips. However, in recent years, this has changed. First of all, a trade war broke out between China and the United States. China is the world's biggest manufacturer of silicon chips, and the country makes them for really cheap as well. The low cost of Chinese-made chips is what allows today's smart devices to be affordable for many people. But as the U.S. government made moves to ban Huawei, Xiaomi, and other Chinese tech manufacturers from the stock exchange, a chip crisis was the result. With Chinese chips no longer flowing as abundantly to the U.S. as before, the big tech companies faced a huge supply problem. With that, they started hoarding silicon chips for themselves 
driving prices up. Not only that, but everything changed when COVID-19 attacked. The entire world was almost literally put to a stop. Both chip and car manufacturing had to take a break. With that, car companies ordered much fewer silicon chips. The remaining supply was then siphoned off by computer companies who faced unusually higher demand for laptops, tablets, and phones. Why? Because almost everyone needed to work and study from home. Cars, on the other hand, took a back seat. After all, who would want to buy a car when you can't leave your house except to buy food or go to the doctor? The year 2020 was a historic low for car sales. Good for traffic, good for the environment, but bad for the automakers. Now that car manufacturers don't have enough chips, they can't even get additional ones that easily. Consumer electronics and tech companies have most of the market share for silicon chips, so that doesn't leave a lot for the car makers. When they can't pump out as many ECUs owing to chip shortage, they can't bring a lot of cars to the market either. How about making cars without the fancy computerized parts? Not possible. Going back to the absolute basics will nullify every safety feature that's now required by law for motor vehicles. And this is even worse news for electric vehicles, as these things are a lot more computerized than their fossil fuel-powered counterparts. What does this mean for car buyers? Two things, more expensive cars and longer wait times. A year ago, not a lot of cars were made because of a lack of demand. Now, demand has swung back, but supply hasn't kept up. The global chip shortage has many automakers rethinking their entire manufacturing strategy. Mercedes-Benz, for example, is reserving the few chips they have for more premium models. As a consequence, the company will stop making its more affordable models for the time being. So if you're planning to buy a Benz, expect to shell out a lot more cash for it. And even if you're willing to spend more for a car, you may have to wait much longer before you can drive it home. Porsche, a leading luxury car maker, has been informing buyers that they may have to wait 12 more weeks before they get their sweet rides. Why? Here's the kicker. The cars are mostly fine and they're still being made. The only thing missing is a chip responsible for monitoring tire pressure. Sure, you can do that by hand with a simple pressure gauge, but in cars like Porsches, automated tire pressure monitoring is essential. You don't want to have a tire blowout while driving at fast and furious speeds. With that, Porsche cannot skimp on this particular chip. In other cases, some features may have to be discarded for the time being. For example, take a look at the Macan SUV, still made by Porsche, before you had an option to upgrade into premium seats that had 18 different configurations. Now, Porsche doesn't offer this upgrade because the chips that controlled the seats are unavailable. Repairs will also be a bigger challenge. If the mechanical parts of your car wear out, replacing them should be fine with pretty much the same costs as before. But if one of the car's electronics fails, replacing that component may cost a lot more than it used to. Mechanics could even find themselves scavenging for chips if they're not widely available. Why can't chip makers sell more to car makers? It's not as if chip makers don't want car makers to keep manufacturing cars. Also, it's not as if chip makers have no ability to sell more chips to car makers. Instead, the laws of economics are at play here. Despite each car having more or less 3,000 chips, the auto industry represents only a fraction of the market share for silicon chips. The Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, is one well-known maker of chips used in vehicles. But in 2020, they sold only 3% of its chips to car manufacturers. Most of TSMC's products went to the smartphone industry, accounting for about 50% of its sales. If TSMC would sell more of its chips to car manufacturers, the company would earn much less. That's not good for business, so they can't just reserve more of their supply of chips to automakers. 
While this chip shortage continues to bother the technology industry, the production of new cars may continue taking a back seat. So if you're looking to buy a new vehicle, especially an electric one, expect to either wait or spend more for it.